Hello and welcome to my new apartment in France. I wanted to have the bookshelves in the shop, but that is ridiculously far away. Let me fix it. There we go. That's better, right? <laughs> so like I said, welcome to my new apartment in France. I am here as a librarian. I got a job and they sponsored my visa and so I'm in France now, which means my upload times are probably going to be very weird for those of you in the US. But, but I don't know, here we go. I'm probably gonna do a whole video about the process of finding the job, applying for the job, the visa thing and all of that. Uh, but I just wanted to hop on here real quick, talk about the books that I brought with me. Those I've gone and found at libraries and at bookstores and even the little free library in my little town square that's going on now. So that's today's video. If you have any questions or whatever for the uh, next, coming videos, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer any and all queries going forward. So without further ado, let me grab the books that I brought with me on the move. So firstly, of course, my Kindle came with me, so I've got that loaded up with lots of great things to read and it's been making the walk with me every day to work and on my way home, I'll stop and get like a little baguette and a bit of wine and have my Kindle out. I love my new tab, <laughs> but that's again more for the video to come. In addition to my Kindle, I brought Pride and Prejudice because I know I'm going to want to reread this. This is one of my all-time favorite books and it always makes me feel better if I'm having a bad day. So that is in preparation for homesickness. <laughs> then I have Northanger Abbey because I actually haven't read as much Jane Austen as I think I should. So. Here we go. This is a annotated edition, but it's not the Norton Critical because the reviews of the Norton Critical edition of this book specifically were really bad, even though I love the Norton Critical edition for Pride and Prejudice. But this is the Anchor Books annotated edition and it's got like lots of fun notes and photos and I'm just a big fan of annotated classics. Then I brought three of my Harper Perennial Olive Editions because I think they're just stunning. So this right now is pretty much all of the art that I have in my apartment, uh, excluding all of the pillows that I have. <laughs> so that is the Gollum and the Genie, or the Jenny by Helen Walker. I just found a note from my mom stuck between them that says, love you. She left a whole bunch of little notes everywhere. Very sweet. <laughs> and I have Commonwealth by Anne Patchett and Queen of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. And then I've started this one, but I haven't gotten very far, about like 40 pages in, and that is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio, because who doesn't love a little bit of dark academia? And when I posted about this on Bookstagram, people seem to really love it. So I'm excited. <laughs> I also brought The Heiress, The Revelations of Anne de Burgh by Molly Greeley, who has written a whole bunch of novels set in and around Pride and Prejudice. So this is Anne de Burgh, Lady de Burgh's granddaughter, niece, daughter, daughter who was supposed to marry Darcy, but didn't. So, plus it's just beautiful. And a friend of mine was like, if they don't make Andenberg chronically ill, like I'm upset. So hopefully we've got some great chronically ill heroine romance novel vibes. That's what I would like from this. And it's just really pretty. Yes, I did go and buy the ARC. I know people have issues with selling and buying ARCs, but like I just wanted the paperback edition. <laughs> then I have A Little Life by Hanya Yanagahari because, Yanagahara because I have been meaning to read this forever and I know it's going to absolutely wreck me because it wrecks everybody. And it's nice and chunky, so hopefully it will take me a bit to get through. 
And then finally, my mom, of oh, this style, I have more. My mom read It Ends With Us on our trip over because my parents came with me to get me set up and she finished it and therefore it now stays with me. So this will be my first Colleen Hoover. Okay, next up, I am currently reading The Well of Its Ascension, book two in the Mistborn trilogy. I, that is, the audio is due back soon, so I'm gonna finish this within the next four days, I think. And the conclusion to the Mistborn trilogy, The Hero of Ages, and these are nice and small, so they fit really well in my suitcase. <laughs> Next after that, I have The Beautiful Ones by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, which is just a stunning cover, the most stunning prose. Like, I just love this author, and this book sounds so interesting to me. I think it's kind of, there's like magic going on, and possibly romance, and also some intrigue for like, the season is happening, and she's a high-class lady, but also she's got telekinesis that she can't control. So I'm really excited. I brought, I did pick like a lot of books that I'm just like really excited for and ones that I've been meaning to read for a while. Uh, this next one, she's chunky. She got brought along mainly because she's chunky and that is Crescent City by Sarah J Mass, House of Earth and Blood and apparently book two is coming out pretty soon. So if I manage to get through this by the end of the year, I can buy myself book two. And have the arc for Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune, and I've been saving this one as well. I know that I really enjoy TJ Klune's characters, especially like the Green Creek series that absolutely stomped in my heart, like a whole bunch. And I left, I think I've got two more books in that series, I left them at home. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to pick those up when I go home either for Christmas or over the summer because I am required by law to take two weeks together concurrently of vacation in the summer months so I'm going to take it around the time when a friend of mine is getting married because I get to be a bridesmaid and I'm really excited <laughs> but anyways that's all to say that um TJ Klune's characters pull up my heartstrings so I was saving this Again, probably for when I get homesick that I can just like let myself cry out all the teal tears, tears, not teal like the color of the cover. I had to bring an N.K. Jemisin series with me. She's just absolutely one of my favorite authors of all time. And I haven't read this duology yet. So I figured it'd be easier to bring the duology than the trilogies. And so I have this, <laughs> the Dreamblood duology, which is, the Killing Moon and The Shadowed Sun. And I have fully no idea what to expect because every single one of N.K. Jemisin's stories is so different from her others. Like, she's a genius. She's an absolute genius. There's no other word for it. And then I also have Dune because I have this brick of a version and it, Despite being huge, it's also relatively small, and I've been meaning to read this for what feels like forever. So, it got brought along. <laughs> Next up, let's talk about the little free library in my new town's square. This is where they put up the market three times a week. So, and it's also just kind of like next to the big church and next to the tourism office and it's very centrally located. It's also very cute. I have a picture on my bookstagram if you want to go check it out. It's just called the Boite à Livre, so the book box. <laughs> and I have picked up quite a few things from there. So while my parents were still here, I picked up these four books in French because I do speak French, I do read French, and um, that is a good thing because I am working in France. <laughs> My French is definitely going to get much better, and I definitely still have a little bit of an accent, so people can usually tell that I'm from somewhere that is in France. I don't know if they necessarily know I'm American, because I don't have like a super American accent when I speak French, but if I could just lose it all together, that would be ideal. So I picked up a novel by Donna Leon, Leon because from my time working at the 
um, French library up in Boston, I am pretty aware that like French folks love Donna Leon, which is weird because she was born in New Jersey and writes about Venice. And she's a crime novelist. All of those things sound great to me. So um, I picked this one up. It's Péché Mortel, une enquête du commissaire Brunetti. So I think this is just kind of a standard police procedural. And I know that people really love her, so I figured, why not? I'll pick it up. Ooh, this one involves a woman who was a nun and is now defrocked and came to Le Commissaire Brunetti to, because she thinks that people are, people within the order were killing others. So that's intense. Then I've got Ne crains pas l'ombre ni les chiens errants, which is a, a story about a woman who thought she was in paradise, but then all of a sudden she ha thinks that it's something else. And um, so it says, Elle vient d'avoir 30 ans, un âge pour vivre ou pour mourir. Elle va choisir de vivre. So this is about a woman who is 30 years old, which is apparently an age where you can live or die, and she's gonna choose to live. Uh, I picked it up because the chapters look really short, which I genuinely and generally love. And um, there's like not much text on each page, so hopefully it'll be a quicker read as I get back into reading in French, um, and I've also found that reading, like, maybe things that are more formulaic, like police procedurals or domestic thrillers, usually are easier to read because when it comes to, like, magic systems, sometimes I'm reading something and I'm like, I don't know if I'm just completely missing what they're saying or if, like, that teapot really did just speak, you know? It's, it's much harder to understand if I'm having a fault with my language uh, comprehension or if stuff is just happening in a wild way. So these are all based in reality. Uh, this next one is Personne n'a peur des gens qui sourient, which is no one's afraid of people who smile. <laughs> And this is a name that I know. I don't know if I've read something by Veronique Obelde or if I've cataloged some of her books for the previous library that I worked at, but this is a woman who decides to go on the run with her sons and they leave everything behind. And we don't know why. So get to figure that out as I read, see if like someone's following them, if there's some troubled waters behind her, and how far she will go to protect her kiddos. Then this is one that I have seen ever in English. I think this is translated from English. Yeah. Translated from Australian English and it is Les Sœurs Van Apfel ont disparu. So the Von Apfel sisters have disappeared. Is that the title in English? Sometimes there's a translation is a little strange. The Van Apfel girls are gone. There we go. The funniest ones are often for films where it's like, why did you, why did you translate that? <laughs> but the two like most mind boggling translations of titles that I've personally experienced are for Chanson Douce, which is a book by Leila Slimani and that gets translated into British English as lullaby, which is like what it is. Chanson douce is like soft song, but it probably means lullaby if taken in context. And in America, they decided to call it the perfect nanny. And they really did some weird marketing for that book because that book is, I really like that book, but it is nothing like Gone Girl, which is what they're trying to describe it as. And then my, one of my favorite movies of all time is called Demain Tout Commence, which is Everything Starts Tomorrow, if you translate directly. 
but the English title for that movie is Two as a Family. How'd we get there? <laughs> I don't get it. And then today I did pick up two more books from that little free library and they are in English. So that's pretty exciting. This one is something that I'm really excited for. It's called Lethal Legacy by Linda Fairstein. And this is a murder mystery that takes place in New York and next to the corpse of the murdered individual is a book from the Rare Books collection at the New York Public Library. People don't know how it got there. So I'm like, ooh, libraries. You know we love that. So, very excited to read that. <laughs> then this next one, this is Book of the Dead. So I was like, ooh, another book. But instead of it, it's like Book of the Dead is apparently the morgue log, the ledger in which all cases are entered by hand. For Kate Scarpetta, however, it is about to have a new meaning. So I have never actually read anything in the Escape Kate, Kate Scarpetta series. So it should be interesting to kind of see if I can just dive in. Um, because I feel like this is a prolific author and I have no idea if it is one that you need to start from the beginning or if you can just jump in. So I'm hoping I can just jump in. Okay books that I've purchased since arriving in France. So the first book that I purchased was at Shakespeare and Company, and they do this really cool thing where they stamp all the books. And I know it's a small thing, but I absolutely love it. This is The Dark Vault, which is the archived and the unbound novels with a bonus short story from V.E. Schwab. And I picked this up not only because it's two books in one, but also because <laughs> It mentions libraries on the back. <laughs> Each body has a story to tell, a life seen in pictures only librarians can read. The dead are called histories and the vast realm in which they rest is the archive. I mean, I'm pretty intrigued by that. So, here we go. Uh, v Schwab can be kind of hit or miss for me. It's like, I really didn't like Addie LaRue, but I did like the trilogy that I just read with Lila Baird. Can't remember what it's called now, but I liked that. So I'm hoping that like this will be the deciding book for whether I like her or not. <laughs> then I also met up with a friend when I was in Paris and she mentioned wanting to read Wuthering Heights again. So I signed on to read it with her. This is a very pretty edition. I love the spine, I love the cover. I actually haven't read Wuthering Heights since high school, so I'm hoping that I like it even more, reading it because I want to read it, as opposed to reading it because someone is telling me to. Then today I was supposed to get Wi-Fi, but instead of getting Wi-Fi, someone gave the wrong number to the people who were supposed to set it up and which is weird because I gave them my number and they've texted me on my number so they should know my number but they gave the wrong number to the people who are going to come set it up so I'm going to be without wi-fi for like another week and I was like pretty disappointed also because I was waiting for like between 10 and 1 just like sitting here waiting for someone to come of course I had a book going or whatever but I was still just like could have been out in the world, you know? And so that kind of got me down a little bit. So I went to one of the other bookstores that I hadn't been to yet. There's a lot of bookstores in this little town. I absolutely love it. And I found out that they do have a small little English language corner. In that corner, they have, let me just show you. These are books in English without covers that they sold for three euros each. <laughs> so I bought five of them because why not? And uh, let's see. So I'm going to start with this book from Sophie Hanna. I think that this is the second in her new Poirot novels, which is really fun because I'm actually in the middle of an Agatha Christie kick. So. I'm excited to have this in my hands, even if it doesn't have a cover. <laughs> and 
Next up, I have the NYX. I don't know why I'm showing these to you. You can't tell what they are from looking at them because they don't have covers. But anyways, this is the NYX by Avon Hill, which I have heard nothing but great things about. So I'm pretty excited to actually read that and to read it for three euros. Who knew? Then I have a book from Ruth Ware, which I'm pretty sure is The Lion Game. I don't think I've read anything by Ruth Ware. I will never read the one where she wrote about the... Wait. Is she the one who wrote about the um, cruise ship murder thing? Because that just honestly sounds like my worst nightmare. So I'm not going to read that one, but I have this one. Then I have a novel from John Boyne. I actually did not like The Hearts Invisible Furies as much as I thought I was going to, but I figured I'd give it, it being his body of work, a second try. And this is A Ladder to the Sky, which I believe takes place in Berlin after the fall of the Berlin Wall. So there we go, historical fiction. And another historical fiction novel, this is The Girls, which I, I'm pretty sure, I know it's a cult novel, I'm pretty sure it's about the girls from the Manson family. And then I also bought three at full price with covers and everything, who can imagine, including Expectations from Anna Hope, which is, follows two best friends from the time when they're teenagers and like thinking of the future and what's gonna happen, and then when they're in the future and nothing is as they were expecting and each one kind of wants what the other has and the best and the worst of female friendship over the course of i don't know like 20 years maybe then i also have the confession by jesse burton it just got my attention because it's beautiful i actually haven't read the miniaturist which is i think the book that she is better known for they are better known for but uh, if I like this, I'll give it a try. And this is a story, I think in two parts, like flashback and flash forward. So we have a mother who goes missing and the last person to see her or know where she is, is a famous writer. And then flash forward later, the daughter is an adult and wants to find out what happened to her mom and why she was left. And so she goes looking for the same author and go finds herself at the door of Constant Constance Holden's house in search of a confession. So that should be pretty fun. And then this last one is kind of like, I just picked it up because it's like, it's interesting to me. So it's a copy of Jane. Is it air or ear? I never know. And it's a pretty cool cover. The back is completely in French, but the text is completely in English. And along each of the pages, there are translations or explanations for weird words or um, old timey phrasing or things that you might not know if you were an English learner. So I don't know, that just kind of struck me as cool. <laughs> um, so that should be kind of fun to, to read along and might help me with my vocab going the other way. I don't know if any of this will be useful in like day to day, but it still could be cool. So Jane Eyre. I'm wondering if maybe I should have split this into multiple parts, but we're here. So I'm just gonna talk to you about the books that I've gotten from the library too. Uh, Okay, so I did get my library card from my local public library and the collection that I work in now, even though it is a kind of specialized academic collection, does have a small corner of fiction books, mainly those that were donated by partners of students or students themselves or staff. So it does have like a little fiction corner. So I have cards for at least two libraries going forward. And there's another library, but it's more French in like the, not HR, but like, I don't know how to explain it. 
it's like a perk for, for people who work for the school. You can borrow things from that collection in addition to the library and they give us discounts on, on movie tickets and like other stuff like that, which I don't think I have access to yet because I started work two weeks ago. So <laughs> my trial period is still very much ongoing. Um, I have read one book from both locations and returned it. Returned both. So for example, I read The Immortal Life of Henry de Lacks. That was the first book that I read and returned to my public library. And then I've also read Murder on the Links by Agatha Christie, which is another Hercule Poirot novel. And that I read and returned to the library where I work. But for the rest of it, I have one other book from the library where I work. Two, I have two books from the library where I work. That is Perfume, the story of a murderer, which two of my colleagues actually both saw me reading and were like, ooh, one of my favorite books. So that's been pretty interesting. I'm most of the way done with it. People seemed to really like it. I had never actually heard of it until pretty recently and I'm very interested in it. It takes place in Paris. Um, we got a murderer who has no smell, like he does not smell, but he has a great sense of smell. It's a very wacky little book. And then I also have Her Fearful Symmetry by Audrey Niffenegger, which is the author of The Time Traveler's Wife, which I, I don't want to say I didn't enjoy, but I know I would have enjoyed more if I had read it when I was a teenager. That makes sense. This is a spookier kind of novel, I think, than The Time Traveler's Wife. Possibly involves ghosts? Right on a cemetery. So I was like, it's October, even though it doesn't feel like October. So I'm going to try to get myself in a spooky season by reading that. I haven't read it yet though, because I just keep finding other books and wanting to read them. <laughs> uh, also, October was kind of a slow month for me in terms of reading, but I'll do a reading wrap up. Hopefully I'll be able to finish a book or two before doing that. Other books that I picked up from the library include Hamnet, because I have friends on Bookstagram who absolutely loved this book. Anxious People, because I have friends on Bookstagram who actually love this author. <laughs> Richard Oseman's The Thursday Murder Club, because I've seen this cover everywhere, and I'm in a bit of a, a murder mystery mood. The Book of Dust, because I love Philip Pullman. I reread His Dark Materials last summer, I guess? And this seems like a great way to revisit a series that I absolutely loved, both as a child and as an adult. Ready Player One because I have the audiobook for it and I really enjoy being able to read and listen at the same time. Silence of the Girls because Greek retellings, they're super fun and I'm a fan. <laughs> and lastly, The Once and Future Witches. I have been, I feel like I've heard nothing but good things about this. I recently listened to a Spindle Splintered, which is also by Alex E. Harrow, and is the start of a Fractured Fables collection, I guess? So it's like a retelling of Sleeping Beauty. And I thoroughly enjoyed the writing style. I also really enjoyed the other book from Alex E. Harrow that I read, which is The 10,000 Doors of January. So there was really no reason not to pick this up. And this is also kind of another it's October, but it doesn't feel like it, so I should make myself read something that makes me feel Halloween-y, you know? So, that's what I got here. So, I brought a lot of books with me, I bought slash acquired a lot of books in the time that I've been here, and I've borrowed a bunch of books in the past two weeks. So welcome to my French apartment, there are now books everywhere, and I'm very, very thoroughly pleased with that fact. I hope you enjoyed this kind of haphazard video. Uh, let me know your thoughts on what I should add to my growing collection of books here, and I hope I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye guys!